Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Uh, in today's video what we're going to do is we're going to look at a request from uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was requested by uh, Yeah Gaming. Um, essentially the Dead Nation videos that I've put on about the Dead Nation style um, system. Uh, the, you know, the camera actually did, the, the camera system did differ quite a lot from the Dead Nation game. Um, in Dead Nation, it's kind of like a fixed static camera which doesn't rotate with the player, um, or rather than the character just has free will uh, and the, the camera kind of just slowly follows the character around. Uh, that's what I've made in today's video, and I've just set up a little example here. Um, I've just took a, a pack off the marketplace um, just to run through because it's got more of a undead vibe. This map isn't really set up for... Um, the fixed camera as you can see here when I get to the end of this aisle I might kind of lose sight of my character which wouldn't be appropriate however as you can see the camera system now um, follows the player around uh, but it's got I noticed when playing Dead Nation it had a bit of like a lag behind it so you, your character runs off and then the, 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 the camera kind of like slowly catches up so you can bob around and, and all sorts of stuff like that um, so yeah with that being with that being said, let's let's jump straight into the tutorial. So this is now on just a, a, a basic uh, third-person template, slightly modified. So as you can see here, that you know, that, that as your character moves around, you've got some sort of movement there where the, the camera really doesn't pan, but then when you get over to the edge, it really catches up. Um, so this is using camera lag. Um, so obviously you'll have a level set up here where you can never get through. Um, the only thing that I've not worked out just yet, obviously uh, Dead Nation is a PlayStation game and that uses the controllers and the analog sticks. The movement on, on this template is WASD, gets your character moving in each place. Now however the aiming system in Dead Nation, uh, just before we get into this, um, the aiming system in Dead Nation is the character strafes in all directions depending on which way the stick is moved I like you know like W A S and D now however the aiming system um, is sort of separate it's like the legs and the upper body are in two different places if I now move the mouse um, whilst holding W uh, you can see that my character fully rotates now that's not what we want um, I am working on finding a way of making this more ideal for uh, a mouse and keyboard but at, at this point, it, it seems like you're probably not going to be able to get both, or um, you'd have to set up some sort of, uh, you know, ifs. If you're using a controller, this is the way that you get, you, you've controlled it. If you're using a mouse and keyboard, this is the way you're going to control it. Now, my original video, my original video addresses more of a mouse and keyboard movement. Um, but it didn't have this floating camera, which you can merge the two together um, and you, you know, you'll get somewhat of a desired effect, but again, it's not going to be complete replicating the Dead Nation style. I think for you to have that complete Dead Nation feel, you're going to have to stick to stick. Um, you're going to have to um, use either a controller or a mouse and make that decision now well you're gonna to have to use a controller um, to get that the full feel um, so with all that out of the way let's just get straight into the how did we do it okay so for us to do this um, what we're gonna actually need to do um, is if you go to I've got a third person template here which I just used to, to recreate this if you go into your third person character, you'll actually notice here on the left, I've actually removed the spring arm and the camera. Um, because essentially, you, you need to disconnect your player's camera. And we're, we're actually creating a, a sort of a separate camera to then say follow the character through the level. Um, so first thing to do is come in here and delete the camera from your character. And that, that's pretty much it for you, for your character. Now, um, here I've created a follow cam blueprint. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to delete that, and I'll tell you what, uh, I'll force delete and just get rid of the whole thing. So that being said, that's now deleted. Um, there's probably some references in my level blueprint that I just need to remove. Yeah, let's delete that. And don't worry, I'm going to go back through all of this. 
So essentially you've just got a third person character now in your scene with no camera. So to make this what you want to do is uh, let's create a blueprint. So right click in your content browser blueprint class. It's going to be an actor and I'm just going to call this follow camera. Once you've created that just double click it and get into it. Um, I actually left the default scene route here. Um, don't know if it makes any difference but just uh, keep it there and then what you want to do is you want to add a spring arm now the reason I'm using a spring arm is normally you would have that on a camera but it gives us the ability to use camera lag um, which is it's kind of like the the anchor will follow the camera and this spring arm will extend and then once it gets to a maximum extension or like once it's so far back behind the player it will then like spring arm it, the spring will tighten up and catch up with the character and that creates that kind of like lagged effect or just camera lag in general so with the spring arm um, selected then go to add component and add a camera just just a regular camera great so now you've got a spring arm and a camera that's brilliant um, the camera, what we actually need to rotate it down, um, so under the rotation Y, you can put something like minus 55, I found was a good, was a good number for me. Um, now, we need to set this camera as the active camera in our, in our game. So, sorry, go back to your map and just i don't know move away a little bit and grab your your follow camera blueprint and just drag that into your scene uh, you can you can drag it up just so it's not like in the floor if you want but it's, it's just looking at that wall for whatever reason there you go um but the, the actual placing of it doesn't really matter because we're going to write some uh, blueprint just to get it to to stick to your guy anyway so with the camera still selected what to actually set what camera is being activated we need to go to the level blueprint and to do that you want to go to blueprints up at the top and you want to click on open level blueprint great now if you have the camera selected if you right click you should see at the top here create a reference to follow camera if you click on that essentially that's just a reference to the camera that we've just placed in our world now for this next bit you want to get a player controller because it's the controller it's the player controller which kind of control <laughs> which kind of controls the camera that's linked to the player um, we also need a, an event begin player because right at the beginning of each game we want um, we want this camera to be assigned to it and then the last one we actually need to remove this context sensitive uh, tick because we want to see everything and we want to set view target with blend that you should see under game and player set view target with blend and essentially what we're doing here is at the beginning of the game we're going to get the target which is the player controller and we're going to say this is our new view camera you know this is the target view uh, we want to use the follow camera so now if you hit compile and press play, what you'll do is you'll you'll get a nice appropriate view of the floor. But at least you'll be able to see through the camera. If we didn't do this, um, the player controller just says, right, well, we need a camera, and it kind of puts a camera inside your player. Um, just as, a, as an example why we're doing that. So now we've set uh, this follow camera to the camera for our character. Brilliant. So now that's all set up, you honestly don't need that level blueprint anymore. So now everything is is to be set up with the follow cam. So let's nip over to the event graph of the follow camera. Now I've set this up on as a tick because I want it. I wanted to do it for every single frame. I want it to update where the camera is in the world. Now um, there may be a better way of doing it because using an event tick can be quite expensive later on in your game but um, for, for the purpose of this video it's, it's, it's the best option so from your event tick before we do that actually what we need to do is let's grab your spring arm in the components and let's drag that into 
the um, onto the event graph because we need a reference to it. And what we're essentially doing, if we go to the viewport, the spring arms, this this little dot here, the anchor right right here, yeah, and we wanna we wanna attach that in some respect to our character. So then the camera's just trailing behind the the, the character. So we are, we want to set the world. Not spell it right. The world location. Um, now, yeah, we want to set the world lo location. I don't know why that's just done that. That's a bit annoying. But. So we want to set the world location. Essentially. Now, for us to get the character location, we want to get the player character. Player character. And that will enable us to cast to third person character. So if we successfully cast, we want to use some of the third person character's information. So as the third person character, we want to get um, actor location. Hang on, where are we? Location. Get the actor location. Now, we don't want to get every part of the character's location. Um, we really only want to get the x-axis. So from the return value, if you right click and split, you can see that it splits that vector into its x, y, and z. And we can do the same for the new location on the set world location, split. So really we only want the x because as you know, in in Dead Nation, the maps are somewhat linear. You know they do they do veer around corners and stuff like that, but the you know you're somewhat on a rail. Now that's something else that I'm going to be looking at for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a spline in the world which follows the map perfectly and then kind of like tilts from left to right to, to sort of focus on the character. Um, now that's not something I've ever done before so it is going to take some time for me to find the best possible way of doing that to make it look nice and natural. Um, but this is this is a great... Um, I don't even know if that's the way Dead Nation do it. I'm going to assume they've got something like that, like a camera on rails. Um, but, which is more appropriate for when you're doing multiplayer but as a single player game to start with uh, this is a really good way to do it. Anyway, um, we're really going to be focused on the X so the X is like linear straight down the, the, the center of the map in, in a sense. So what we could do is we could literally just say the new location is the character's X but um, that means we're going to be directly over the top of the character and we're, you know we're going to he's not going to be in the center of the screen so depending on what your spring arm length is and how you've angled your camera you might just need to manually minus um, some numbers off here so let, before we do anything let's just hit compile and play and let's just see where that sits right okay so I can't really see anything oh sorry um, the the uh, the Z or Z location there, I've, I've set that to zero. So let's just put uh, an arbitrary 800 in there and let's just see where we are now. So there we go, 800, we can see that, um, you know, our character is quite close. I think that's a bit too close for you to get the same vibe. So let's put 1200, you know, that's quite high again, that's nice. So I'm going to put uh, 1300, you know, and I quite like that. But what I'm what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to tilt this camera down a bit more, so minus 65 degrees, and let's just see where that sits. So yeah, I like that. So as you can see already, the the camera is now following us um, throughout the map, and we've got a good visibility of our character no matter where they are. But it's very static. If I go up, down, up, down, it, 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 you know, it's very it's very static there, uh, which is not not really what we want. Um, now, depending what you, <laughs> you know, I've I've angled the camera there quite steep, so we'll, we'll, 
we're quite high up above it. If you want to go more angled down, you know, let's set it to 55. We're quite close to the character there. This is where you can start to negate some of this X value. So wherever the character is, minus, uh, let's say, 200. You know, now you've got more of an angle, but your character's still somewhat near the center of the screen. So let's set that to 300. See where that puts us. There you go, your character's quite central now, um, but you've got that more of an angle. Either way, you know, you can either minus this off or put more of an angle on your character, whatever whatever vibe you're going for. Um, now, lag. So, the other thing was, as soon as I press forward, the camera moves. Um, and it's very a jerky and, and, and immediate. Now, underneath your spring arm, if you select your spring arm in your follow camera, Scroll down on the right, you can see here lag, enable camera lag. Now what lag does is it it allows like um, a smoothing or like a sort of trailing camera. Um, now the this, this relies on a speed and a distance. So your camera max distance is how far do you want the camera to get away from the character before it starts catching up. So I'm just going to set that to 200 and see how that looks and then here um, the lag speed, so it controls how quickly the camera reaches the target position. Lower values are slower and higher values are faster, so zero is no lag. So I'm going to set this to one uh, and just make it as slow as possible. Uh, I think that gives us a nice feel. And you can see now that as I moved from side to side or forward and back, it's kind of like this nice catch up lag. And I think, well, playing Dead Nation. There's definitely a, a part of that. As you run over to one of the corners of the map, the, the camera slowly catches you up. And I think now we've got more of a Dead Nation feel to it. Now, you can have it pivot from side to side if you want. I've obviously not even took y, uh, the Y location into consideration at all. Um, you might want to clamp this to say that the camera can only maximum go from left to right by five or ten units so you're not swinging right over the map but I'll leave that with you but in its most basic fashion you've now got more of a dead nation feel I hope that's what you wanted um, and I appreciate the comment Again, that was Yeah Gaming. Thanks for your comment. If it's not what you wanted, please leave me another comment. Um, again, like I said at the beginning, the Dead Nation relies a lot on stick movement. Um, mouse and keyboard is not was not intended. It's not, it's, the game's not built on a mouse and keyboard movement style. Um, I am going to continue to work on this a little bit to try and get more of a natural Dead Nation feel with a mouse and keyboard because I feel like um, you're probably going to want it to be compatible with both, um, which is going to be interesting. If not, if you're dedicating it to a controller and stick movement, let me know and I'll focus mainly on that and get the controls absolutely sweet for that. Um, but yeah. If it helps, consider giving me a like um, if you don't want to miss any upcoming videos or any other requests that I might be, uh, be doing. Consider subscribing and until the next video, thanks again and I'll see you all soon.